Good afternoon fellow Plexers. This is going to be a very specific video for someone running a Plex server on Unraid who also uses FileBot and who would like to use FileBot while they're away from home. Now you need to get back into your NAS somehow when you're away from home. I use TwinGate. I can start the client up on my Linux laptop, on my Android tablet, or my Android phone and I can access any service, any shortcut I've got created. I use Chrome apps on everything, tablet, phone, and laptop. So I can pull up Unraid at its local IP address once I've established that private tunnel. Now I actually have TwinGate installed in a Docker container on my Synology NAS, and in the settings that TwinGate added my little Unraid NUC as a connector, so that's how I get back home. But however you get back home, maybe you might bring a file in while you're away manually through a Prowler search or a NZB Hydra search. And if you want to rename it with FileBot, you can use your remote connection to move the file around after it's renamed with FileBot. So this is just going to show how easy it is to get FileBot started under Unraid and the fact that I did not need to worry about media info being installed alongside a local FileBot install in order to use my more complex um, FileBot expressions that add media characteristics or can look inside the file um, to determine if it has subtitles or not. So I'm, I'm quite excited by this. So my setup is unique because I'm running Unraid as only a Docker host install for a few containers while my media is still on my Synology NAS. So I have this shared pointing back to my DS1520 from my Plex shared folder. I have this connection pointed back for the channels DVR container and this is just something I was screwing around with so I have to have this set up first and I do not have any storage under Unraid just my cache pool and my extra flash drive fills in for the one required storage device to start the array up but suppose we Unraid 7 is doing away with this requirement so it's a very unique Unraid install, but this should work for any install of Unraid, no matter where the data is pointed. So it's basically just going to apps and searching for FileBot and doing the whole thing. You click on it and you choose install. And when you do, that will bring up the configuration page for the Docker container which is where we are going now. Now it's been about three or four days. I don't remember doing much of anything um, out of the ordinary. So let me turn on the advanced and show more settings. So I think I left everything default besides pointing the container creation to the cache pool. I think this was mount user and I had to change user to cache. And then what else did I do? So I did add in this stuff for my automated or for my default expressions, not realizing it wasn't going to work for how I use things manually. So I think these just said Plex in the curly braces. So I did have to add a manual path, and this is back to my Plex Media, which I define in the unassigned devices plugin in Unraid. Um, this is default, but the, the cache change up here is all I needed. I didn't need to, where am I here? I did not have to t touch this at all. So that's really all I did. 
I pointed to this manual path. All right, so let's recreate the container. Now I could just click on it and open the um, web UI, but I already have a Chrome shortcut. So before we get to it, in my main Plex movie shared, or my plain Plex shared folder, I use sort um, folders. So all my movie library files are in this movie sort folder. My TV show library folders are in that TV sort folder. So outside of where any of my Plex libraries are scanning, I created this test media folder that's got some of the public domain media that I use on my Synology NAS units for test servers. So you can see this is renamed how I typically rename things. So I'll just dumb that up. And I'll dumb this up too without the source ID. And let's go through this. So in this folder, I didn't dumb this down because I don't want to lose the remastered edition tag. And I can actually dumb these down. this too. Now my file bot expression has some extra information in it. So with a little prepping it can tell a forced from a hearing impaired subtitle. I can't remove this extra information because it won't know that it's a hearing impaired subtitle. But I will dumb it down. Gotta leave the SDH in it so that FileBot knows it's different. Oh, that's wrong. Gonna have a dot there, and that that might as well be a forced one too. I could I could have all three subtitles, and as long as it's dot force dot SRT or dot SDH dot SRT, FileBot will know what to do with it with my custom expressions. So I'm going to pause the video while I fix the rest of these file names to get them all kind of dumbed down. Okay, so basically everything's kind of dumbed down. Show folder names without the year. Does have the proper season folder. And just a basic generic file name. The show name, the season episode coding, and the episode name. So the only thing I didn't dumb down were things I couldn't get away with. For example, I have multiple versions of the Big Buck Bunny. I dumbed one down, but this is actually an example of versioning. All four of these will scan in exactly this as one title and Plex, and then you can pick which version to play. And I also couldn't change anything with an addition. But I could dumb this down further by getting rid of my media characteristics. And I could get rid of the TMDB source ID, but it needs to keep the addition tag so FileBot can handle it. And what I didn't do is I didn't get rid of the source ID on a lot of these movies, so I can do that manually right now on some of them. Let's do four all together. Okay, so that's the setup. So I already have FileBot as a Chrome shortcut. So this is my regular FileBot program that runs locally on this Pop! OS desktop, and this is the web-based one. So again, as long as I tunnel home somehow, 
through TwinGate, through TailScale, through a self-configured open VPN connection, through a reverse proxy for guys who are smarter than I am. Once this is installed on your NAS, and in this case Unraid, you've got access to FileBot. So let's go to the Rename tab, and I can simply click Load, select Folder. Now when this first opens up, I think this is what you see. Plex Library is what I want, and now I'm into my shared media folder. And if I go back to Unraid, I didn't show this earlier, but down where I define this host path, so this is my physical structure leading back to my Synology NAS, and this is what I'm calling that path. So if we go back to this, that's what I'm calling the path. So now I can jump into the test media folder, and if I wanted to, I could rename everything at once in the movie library just by clicking that. But I'm going to break this up and do everything in the kids folder. All right, so you see the original file names. Unlike the local version of FileBot, they're grayed out. So I've added my custom expression that does a lot. Okay, so I'm sorry the text is so small I can't increase it. But we have Boxcar Blues from 1930. It's actually a movie short. So it's going to create structure in place. So it's going to change the folder, which doesn't show on the left, but it's just Boxcar Blues. Um, 1930 it's going to add the source ID to it and then it's going to change the file name to also add the source ID and my media characteristics so it's just that simple I'll hit rename close file bot let's go into the movie kids and you'll see now they have the complex name that they didn't and my expression also picks up in picks up and notifies you if there's embedded English subtitles or embedded unlabeled subtitles, which is a clue that you need to edit the videos in MKB Toolnix to assign the English language to the subtitle if those unlabeled subtitles are actually English ones. All right, so let's do some more with FileBot. We've done the kids, let's do the movie documentary library and the main movie library. We'll click load again, select folders, and let's see if I can highlight two. All right, so let me, now you could use FileBot's default expression. So let me click fetch data if you want to name simply. And from movie mode, I'll pick the movie database. And now I'm going to confirm that this is the right movie. So this is just going to rename simply, and I have this one red X, and that's because this basic way of renaming has no idea what to do with a hearing impaired subtitle. But it also doesn't know what to do with this remastered edition. So I don't want to do that. Let me pick my own expression. Again, we'll confirm the Memphis Bell. And you'll see how I didn't rename these files, so I've got the green dot in front of them. They're not going to change. But the one I did rename for Big Buck Bunny now is going to have the extra media characteristics in it. And the difference between these four files is really just um, Plex versioning. There's a versioning support naming document for movies, and this is all it is. I upped it a notch. 
At some point, Plex told us with a TV series that any episode that had brackets in it, Plex would ignore what's inside the bracket. So I'm doing the same thing in a movie library, even though it's not officially supported by the name and guide for movies yet. So now these are actually getting renamed and creating the structure, but because the structure gets created in place, it's not going to be any place besides where it belongs in that existing library structure. And as you can see, because the word remastered is in here, and it's a common addition that FileBot can track, it keeps it in the output file. So we're re renaming two libraries at once. And now let's load again. And this time, let's do the TV show libraries. We'll do, we'll do both the kids and the default one that are in here. So I got a bunch of public domain Looney Tune episodes, the Beverly Hillbillies and the Lucy show. So I'll use my normal custom expression for TV shows First guess is that it's the wrong show. I have to select the right one. And naming across the network takes longer and it might take longer when you're remoting in. But you're not usually going to rename a lot. You're just going to do a few things while you're maybe on vacation or traveling for work. So I'm just going to spot check a few. This episode name is Funny Outtakes. Duke becomes a father. The Great Feud. Ups and downs. And I'm satisfied, so I'm just going to hit rename. And now we have to validate to remove um, some illegal characters from two different file names. And then continue. And FileBot renamed 74 files from multiple TV shows. So one TV show here with multiple seasons and two TV show shows here with multiple seasons. So I'm very excited that I get to use FileBot if I'm traveling. It's not huge, I won't need to use it a lot, but it's just another modern convenience that when I'm away from my Plex server, I'm not really away from my Plex server. So this is under Unraid. Now unfortunately, I used Unraid's um, install file as a package for my Synology NAS, got it working similarly, but my custom expressions wouldn't work for all the extra data that normally media info helps supply for um, a local install of FileBot. And then I tried to get a Docker container going following Marius Hosting's instructions, which are usually fabulous, but the container would not start up. So this is kind of on my back burner, but if I can figure out the same functionality under Synology NAS, I'll do that and show that in a future video. Right now you can add it as a package, but my custom file names won't work. So I can't have this extra information included through the default Synology package install or have it look for embedded subtitles or have it discover the language of external subtitles or have it work with the Edition information for movies. So right now Unraid's a complete success and Synology is only a minor success And I'll let you know if I figure that out too. So everybody thanks for watching and happy plexing